Okay, ready. Welcome to Dev and Doc, a podcast where developers and doctors join forces to delve into the possibilities of AI in healthcare. Uh, my name's Josh, aka Doctor. And I'm Shelko, the Dev. Welcome to the introductory episode of the Dev and Doc podcast. We hope that this will be a blend of two worlds of medicine and technology. Uh, this will be a long-standing series where we explore how AI or artificial intelligence can be used in healthcare. The reason why we wanted to do this was because we both work in healthcare and we both want to make an impact applying AI into the clinical setting. However, what we re realized very quickly is that both clinicians and developers are trying to achieve the same goal, to make an impact to staff, to patients. But the problem is we're operating in independently and we aren't always talking to each other. And I think this needs to change because there's so many valuable insights that we can share. Um, the idea about this podcast is at least a couple of years old. Uh, we had many discussions over lunch or over bouldering sessions uh, where we talked about AI in healthcare and where we were where we were thinking that would be awesome to have a platform, would, would be awesome to share this knowledge or even to get input from uh, from other people. Yeah, I mean, we spent hours after work and during nights and things talking about this. And I think it's there's so much value in having open dialogue with each other because there's so much we can share. Like, I learned so much from you from the technical perspective about model building and architectures. And hopefully I've also given you some insights into like the day-to-day -day life of a clinician and what certain things, what the nuances in healthcare actually mean and how we need to build a model that's, uh, that reflects that and that's aligned with clinician intents and, and what we want to do for our patients. Yeah, I mean, 100%. Uh, very often me as a developer, I don't really understand the healthcare side or the patient care side. So it was very nice to hear the clinical side to understand what is it really that clinicians need what is it that they do how they do it and what can in fact help them so what would you say like who is the target of our podcast what's the target audience this podcast is not primarily targeted towards clinicians that want to learn about ai and vice versa developers and coders who want to learn about healthcare but I guess people in the uh, wider sphere of that would be interested as well. So any like AI kind of clinical research fellows, uh, people who are um, working in the health tech sector, including kind of business and managerial staff working in, in, in the space and who want to learn more about AI. Uh, what? Yeah. Do, do you have anything to add to that? No, I think the, the way we have we have structured the episodes is that some of them are clinically led some of them are led by the developer so i think exactly as you said w both audiences both clin clinicians and developers would benefit from something like this because some episodes mm -hmm. will be a much more uh, on the medical side we'll be exploring a medical topic and then trying to see how ai uh, can be combined or can be can help with that topic and on the other side we'll go a bit more into an AI topic and then see mm. how it can integrate into healthcare so yeah perfect uh, yeah I, I think you know when I started on this journey in um, kind of artificial intelligence in, in healthcare I really did find there was a lack of resources out there for me to learn about AI in general and it was such a steep leaning uh and it was such a steep learning curve. Like I really had to spend a lot of time to uh, learn the basics and it wasn't intuitive and there wasn't many resources around for me to learn from. So hopefully this podcast can also serve as, you know, some education to, to clinicians who are just starting off in AI and beyond. I had the exact same feeling, but of course, for the opposite side. So if I wanted to learn something about healthcare, if I wanted to learn something about medicine, it felt like this is impossible. It, yeah. th there are some resources, but it felt like 
man, I need to spend 10 years yeah. or read a book that's like introduction to medicine. And then the book is like 7 million pages. I have, I, it is impossible to read that. And yeah, I yeah. think, I mean, nice I mean, if you, a, if you imagine, you know, like healthcare is, you know, five or six years of medical school and yeah. then a computer science degree is what, four years, three, four years at least. So yeah, you're, no, you're right. Exactly, you're combining yeah. I them. mean, yeah, it is. It, oh, both of them are five years, I think. A CS degree is also five years. Really? Okay. Yeah. You well, have three the, bachelors, two masters. Nice. Oh yeah. Well, on that topic, why don't we go? On that topic, why don't we go a bit into our backgrounds? Yes. Uh, maybe I'll start. So I'm Josh. I'm a training neurologist in the NHS, and I'm also a clinical research fellow in artificial intelligence. So I basically work to, uh, I work with clinicians to deploy healthcare AI models to help with their problem uh, in the clinical department. I'm also doing a PhD in neuroscience and machine learning. Um, and yeah, I've been working in healthcare for just over eight years now. Uh, so I do have a bit, quite a bit of experience um, and yeah. Over to you, Jaco. My background is much more in computer science. I'm currently a uh, research fellow in AI for healthcare at King's. I'm also doing my PhD here. I'm hopefully a couple of months away from finishing. Um, I've also been a CTO of a AI startup for the past eight years. So most of my experience is in fact in the computer science side in using AI and applying AI to different use cases. About healthcare, I think I've been in this field now for a bit over five years. Yeah, that's really impressive. Why did you actually decide to go into healthcare? I spent quite some time uh, in industry working with um, the real estate industry, lawyers, and all of it was, of course, through AI and applying AI to the different fields. But at some point, um, I wanted to do something a bit uh, more meaningful for myself. So something where I would maybe feel a bit better and healthcare was the field where I saw myself. And I also saw that if I want to do um, good in the world, if even though if that sounds like a bit cheesy, um, even if I want to do that, I found the best way to do it was to apply AI to healthcare. I found that that is the, for me, the way I can have the biggest impact. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we're very lucky to have you. Um, thanks, for, thanks for joining the... Um, yeah, thanks for joining the workforce. Well, I'm mean, uh, we, happy we, to we, be we, here. Of course. <laughs> we need the talent in the NHS for sure. You know, there's a lack of kind of computer science and artificial intelligence researchers and clinicians who, who, who are proficient in that. So I think it's great you've joined us. I think uh, this is yeah. not just the NHS. I, I feel this is healthcare in general. Somehow I feel a lot of AI and even mm -hmm. just machine learning or uh, computer programmers don't go really into healthcare or somehow stay away from mm. that. And I think that's also probably like one of the reasons why there are also not that many resources for learning mm. about AI in healthcare. Yeah, I think that there's a barrier to entry, right? There's a lot to learn before you, yeah. de you can deliver true value for both you know, clinicians and developers, it sounds like. And how about you? Like, how did you or why did you decide to go into healthcare and neurology, in fact? Uh, well, that's a really long story. <laughs> um, I, I tried to keep it short. But basically, when I was applying to medical school, I was really interested in mathematics at that time. But I think because of my parents, like my kind of cultural background and the grades which I had, I was kind of heavily pushed into medical school which, I don't know, people just seem to push all the high achievers in high school to, to medicine for some reason. Um, so I ended up in medical school. Um, I graduated. I, I enjoyed it, but, you know, parts of me thought I'd always want to go back to mathematics in some way. 
Mm. Um, I started working as a doctor and then I got a really nice post in London working in St. Thomas's as an academic clinical fellow. So at that time, my research was based in more experimental medicine and clinical trials. So I actually helped run the first COVID vaccine trial, the AstraZeneca one in London. Um, and I've also been involved in experimental research looking at um, dietary nitrates. So you know, that's a compound that can basically um, has good cardiovascular effects. And we're looking at how that affects your heart and, and your um, likelihood of strokes and things like that. But then the pan when the pandemic hit, a lot of that experimental research was put on hold. So essentially, um, you know, the COVID research was prioritized and then the research in which I was doing for my post was postponed. And I saw that as an opportunity to basically reach out to um, one of the professors in, in King's, um, King's College uh, Hospital. Um, his name's uh, James Teo, one of the profess neurology professors there, but also the director of um, of data and, and AI. And I read a few of his papers, I was really interested. So I basically just asked him, oh, could I learn a bit more about what you do? Could I possibly join in and help you with your research and, and also learn from you? Um, and he was very accommodating. Um, he essentially took me on. Uh, I learned a lot in the space of those few months. And then this kind of post opened up um, as a clinical research fellow in artificial intelligence. And immediately I applied to that and got it. Um, and that's pretty much how I got into AI. I mean, I really love it because it kind of brings back my initial interest in mathematics and it's more like technical and logical. And I really love like the joy of kind of coding and being very logical in that and then building models. It, it's just really satisfying to me. Um, and that's probably why I'm also drawn to neurology. Um, neurology, I think, as far as specialties go, it's quite a kind of logical step-by-step -step process in how you reach a neurological diagnosis because you have this framework of the brain and, you know, how it functions. And then through this function of your, like, motor or sensory function or your balance function, you can kind of work out which part of the brain has been affected. And um, from there, you know, think about treatments and things like that. So it, it's a really, really nice uh, specialty, which also I think appeals to my um, kind of logic slash mathematics brain. Nice, a very interesting journey. You basically came full circle. Yeah. Started I've... with math, ended up at math. Yeah, exactly. Um, why don't we wrap up by just going over you know things we want to talk about in this podcast and you know what our listeners can expect in the coming episodes uh, why don't you start yeah i think um one of the main topics we'll always try to discuss what is um currently the state of the art in the field of artificial intelligence mm-hmm so one of the topics we'll cover in the next episode will be uh, large language models. Of course, everyone yes. is currently talking about that and we want to see how they can be used and applied to medicine, to healthcare. Yeah, you can't go anywhere nowadays without hearing large language yeah. models and, and generative AI. It's like that Google Summit um, video. I don't know if you saw where the CEO just kept saying generative AI, generative AI. Yes, there is a word <laughs> count, I think, for generative yeah. AI. And it's like hundreds of times. Um, yeah, but apart from that, we also want to talk about, um, you know, the wider natural language processing. So kind of text-based AI and yeah. bigger challenges like AI alignments. So making sure that AI is working towards what clinicians want um, and, you know, delivering care to the patients. But then also a lot about kind of um, diseases and health infrastructures and the nuances that certain departments uh, have, you know, so it's different hospitals and different departments function very differently and have very different, uh, you know, workflows. And therefore, if you want to implement any model into that, you need to be very conscious of how the NHS works and, and you know, how each department works differently to one another. And also 
a bit more broadly the AI field. We don't want to simply cover what is state of the art, but we want to also to some extent cover the basics, to some extent have a bit of uh, introduction into the field of AI for clinicians. And I think also on the opposite side, introduction to the field of healthcare for developers. So a mix mm -hmm. of both sides. Yeah. And hopefully some nice interviews with kind of opinion leaders and, and people who are uh, really working in the field to make an impact. I think that'd be really nice. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think from my side it would be very nice to have more interviews with um, clinicians, with people working in also on like the admin side in hospitals. I'm very mm -hmm. interested in how uh, a IT infrastructure is deployed in hospitals and why do things take time or what are the difficulties how can how can this be made better easier nicer and mm -hmm. how i mean the main goal of this podcast is to improve healthcare and everything yeah. i think we everything we talk about everything we will do here will only yeah. have that goal and we will try to cover all the different aspects that can help us improve mm. healthcare. Yeah. Yeah. Those are lofty ambitions, but, uh, I hope we deliver. Yeah. My <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, okay. I'm looking forward to the next episode, um, where we'll be talking about, um, natural language processing, uh, and named entity recognition. Yep. Thank you very yep. much for listening. Uh, subscribe and we hope to see you next time. Bye-bye. See you on the next one. Bye. Thank you very much for listening. Everything we talk about, everything we will do here, we will try to cover all the different aspects that can help us improve healthcare. Those are lofty ambitions, but uh, I hope we deliver. Subscribe and we hope to see you next time. Bye-bye. See you on the next one. Bye.